Open circuit or evaporative cooling towers have long been used in the built environment and by industry to transfer waste heat to the atmosphere. But a cooling tower can also be responsible for up to half of the potable water used on your site. With over 4,000 cooling towers registered in Victoria alone, the total volume of water consumed and potentially wasted is significant. The increasing cost and scarcity of water means it makes financial and environmental sense to manage your cooling tower water consumption closely and improve efficiency wherever possible. Statewide, a water efficiency improvement of just 10% will save over 1 billion litres of drinking water annually. An easy way to compare the water efficiency of your cooling tower with best practice is to use the ERA Cooling Tower Water Efficiency Calculator, available for free at mycoolingtower.com.au. Not only will a well-managed system use water efficiently, but it will generally reject more heat, use less power and expensive chemicals, create less risk and help manage costs. It makes good business sense to manage your system well. Before setting out to improve the water efficiency of your tower, you should first be familiar with it. Cooling towers range in design, size and complexity depending on the manufacturer, but all feature the same basic components and functionality. They include a fan, sound attenuation and discharge grill or screen. The drift eliminator reduces the number of water droplets that leave the tower trapped in the tower discharge air. The tower will also feature a water distribution system where hot water comes from the process or building and is sprayed over the fill where the evaporation takes place. Around the cooling tower, air inlet louvers allow cold dry air to flow over and through the wet fill. The cooled water is collected in the basin which has a make-up water inlet and overflow outlet. Cold water exits the basin via the tower outlet, where it is fed back to the process or building. To optimise the water efficiency of any cooling tower, the entire water balance must be considered. Water losses can occur from a number of sources, including evaporation, drift, overflow, leaks and bleed. While some losses such as evaporation are necessary for the correct and safe operation of the system, all sources can cause significant water losses if left uncontrolled. Let's take a look at the common sources. Drift is largely controlled by the tower's design and operation, and in particular by the design of the drift eliminator. Modern drift eliminators should achieve a drift loss of less than 0.002% of the total volume of water recirculating in a system. Check the drift eliminators are not damaged, fouled or blocked and are installed correctly. Check that the airflow rates are within acceptable manufacturer limits. Check that the tower's water pressure and flow rate is not too high. Controlling fan speeds and the prevention of ambient wind on the tower are ways of reducing potential drift losses further. Overflow is the uncontrolled water loss caused by water flowing back into the cold water basin once the circulating pump has stopped. Where the volume of this water is greater than the capacity of the water basin, overflow will occur. Causes of overflow include poor pipe work design and installation, an incorrectly set make-up water level, the overflow pipe inlet not being adequately protected, 
Overflow may be the result of air pressure forcing water out of the overflow pipe when the operating water level is set too high in a forced draft counterflow cooling tower. To prevent losses through overflow, check the ball float valve is working, does not bounce excessively and can close. Check that the overflow pipe is not leaking. See that the overflow pipe is installed at the correct level. Check that water is not being blown out of the overflow pipe during normal operation. See that tower water distribution pipe work is not oversized or too long. Check that the operating water levels in multiple tower cold water basins are equal. Ensure overflows do not occur on system shutdown. Leaks can occur at any time and will disturb the balance of water treatment systems by diluting the system with more makeup water than expected. Visually survey the plant regularly for leaks. Check water meters to detect changes in usage patterns. Use sub-metering where possible. A sharp decrease in water conductivity could also indicate the presence of a leak. Through the normal evaporation of water from a cooling tower, the concentration of dissolved and undissolved solids within the system's circulating water increases. A portion of this water needs to be bled from the system and replaced with clean makeup water to avoid scaling and fouling of both the cooling tower and system heat exchanges. Here are some ways to reduce the water losses from the bleed of your system. Locate the bleed takeoff point on the high pressure side of the system after the heat exchanger. Protect the bleed water valve with a strainer or filter installed upstream. Consider upgrading to an automatic conductivity controlled bleed system to improve water quality control and improve water efficiency. Regularly clean and calibrate the conductivity sensor to assist with accurate bleed control. The term cycles of concentration refers to the ratio of makeup water to bleed water flow rates. It can be shown to be very similar to the ratio of total dissolved solids in circulating water to makeup water. Opportunities may exist in your cooling tower to increase the cycles of concentration by reducing the bleed volume and thereby reducing the makeup water the system requires, as has been the case at Federation Square in Melbourne. My name is Victor Anastasiadis. Uh, my role here, I'm the Mechanical Services Manager. What that means is I look after all of the air conditioning uh, throughout the building. Water management, water infrastructure, piping. Federation Square was really built with sustainability in mind. We wanted to build on that through our water management across the site. ERA's best practice guideline helped us to develop our risk management plan. We improved upon our water harvesting the upper limit to the number of cycles of concentration that can be achieved is primarily determined by the purity of the makeup water. Whilst it's been an effective way of improving our water consumption, the process was very complex here at Federation Square and we had to work very closely with our water treatment services provider in order to achieve the cycles of concentration that took into account our pH levels and also maintaining our corrosion levels throughout the site. Water savings achieved by increasing the cycles are not endless, as this graph demonstrates. Water savings are typically optimised at 6 or 7 cycles, before diminishing rapidly after rising above 10. Makeup water replaces all system water losses. Measure your makeup water with a meter so you know just how much water and money you have saved. It is wise to also establish the quality of your makeup water. Improving makeup water quality can assist in increasing the cycles of concentration number, reducing bleed volumes, and ultimately reducing the amount of makeup water required. Alternative water sources may also be able to be used as makeup water, including rainwater and stormwater condensate from air conditioning or refrigeration systems, rivers, lakes or seawater, 
bore water or ground water, recycled or reused water that is fit for purpose. Any water reuse, rainwater, stormwater, surface water or bore water applications need to be discussed with the government authorities and water treatment specialists with jurisdiction so that the appropriate licenses, approvals and technical advice are obtained. ERA, in conjunction with the Victorian Government, has developed a number of resources and tools to help you operate your site's cooling tower system in a water and cost efficient manner. Visit mycoolingtower.com.au to access more information about cooling towers. The site offers handy checklists, a water audit pro forma and the free easy to use water efficiency calculator to help you get started. You can also download for free the ERA Water Conservation in Cooling Towers Best Practice Guideline, which expands on the topics covered in this presentation. For more information, contact these organisations or consult with your local water authority, engineer or water treatment service provider.